ستر العودة عام تسعة وستين زهرة المدائن تسعة وستين جريدة التلفزيون الأردني المصورة بين عامي تمانية وستين وتسعة وستين لا للحل السلمي تسعة وستين شهادة الأطفال في زمن الحرب تسعة وستين بالروح بالدم سبعين العدد الثاني من جريدة فلسطين السينمائية الف واربعة وسبعين على طريق النصر الف وخمسة وسبعين واخيرا المفتاح الف وستة وسبعين هاي الكاميرا اللي كانت معه The development of Palestinian cinema inherently has responded to the political and social transformations that take place during the Israeli occupation of historical Palestinian land. These transformations have affected indigenous Palestinians in securing their self-sustaining villages and farming lands. Palestinian territories consist of the West Bank, which includes East Jerusalem, and the Gaza Strip, which borders Egypt and Jordan. Since the threats of Israeli control consisting of land, air, and sea blockades that authorize the entry of goods and trades, Palestinians have been struggling to obtain land sovereignty. The difficulty in reconstructing Palestinian history lies in piecing together remnants of memory that only exist today through oral storytelling. The people of Palestine's literature, cultural iconography, and art have been decimated and or lost due to the conflict surrounding Israeli settler colonialism. A shift in narratives takes place as the continuity of Palestinian histories is broken apart. It's imperative to understand the roles of displaced refugees in attempting to regain cultural agency and political ideologies, homogenizing contemporary signifiers that delineate memory and trauma. Despite the barriers of distinctive generational class, religion, and gender. <laughs> كل ما نبني بيت تنهدموا لنا اياه، كل ما نخلف ولد قتلوا لنا اياه. شو ظل لنا؟ شو ظل قتلوا الامل، قتلوا زهرة الحب اللي بقلبنا. شو ذنب العمارات هاي؟ شو ذنب؟ شو ذنب الولد اللي مات؟ لسه من طول شهداء من تحت الانقاض. لسه، وبقول لك جاي اللجنة، ليش قرارات العالم كلها بتطبق علينا بس على اسرائيل؟ لا! يا عالم، وينك يا الله؟ Muhammad Hamza Ganayem describes the sanctioning of the idea of temporality within refuge ideology in that the state of the refugee incessantly remains transient and unfixed. Hence, the refugee's idealization of moving forward indicates retrieving the past and their tangible homeland. The process of trauma continues to ravage and debilitate the collective consciousness of displaced Palestinians existing as only violent, repressed memories. Therefore, the socio-political possibilities of cinema aid the displaced Palestinians in reconstructing the past from memory and confronting indescribable trauma during the process. Palestinian cinema is innately tied to a complex world of culture, language, and art dating before the year 1948 in Palestine. It must only be understood by the context of this historical trauma that extends 60 years of mass displacement and exile. Palestinians as a diverse community and network of working filmmakers and artists are dispersed demographic since they reside and actively work across the globe sharing a homogeneous ideology based on ancestral memories. One of the earliest films in Palestinian cinema can be traced back to the silent era of the 1920s. These short silent films were made up of travelogues, religious tours, folk dancing, and studies of architecture. Their narratives are more focused on compiling archive materials. It is therefore historical to assume that the birth of the filmmaking industry was only conceived by European male filmmakers. إذ أن هذا المهرجان هو المهرجان الوحيد المخصص كليا للأفلام التي 
تعالج القضية الفلسطينية ولهذا المهرجان في رأينا أهمية سياسية كبرى في دعم قضية الشعب الفلسطيني وثورته المسلحة أعتقد الأخاني ممكن يضيف حول هذا الشيء بعتقد بأنه ممكن نقول بأنه إقامة أو فكرة إقامة مثل هيك مهرجان بالنسبة لنا كالسينما الفلسطينية من عندها سلاح من الأسلحة الممكن تخدم الثورة الفلسطينية وتخدم القضية العربية بالوطن العربي كله Palestinian cinema is divided into four crucial periods that correlate to the shifting struggles of national disintegration. Filmmaker and early pioneer Irwaham Hassan Sirhan debuted the beginning of this first period in 1935 when he filmed a short silent project that captures the arrival of King Saab in Saudi Arabia in Palestine. Sirhan provided an accompanying live musical score over the 20 minute long footage, gaining praise from festival audiences and juries. In 1940, Sirhan produced his first collaborational project with filmmaker Jamal Al Asfar on their film Realized Dreams, which centers the lives of Palestinian orphan children, providing necessary visibility. Five years later, Sirhan went on to collaborate with the fellow Palestinian filmmaker and student Ahmad Al Kilani and founded the first significant Palestinian production studio called Studio Palestine, funding and producing several feature length films directed and shot by a small network of filmmakers. These films, unfortunately, are all now lost due to conflict with Israeli forces that were met much later. In understanding the underlying context for the disenfranchisement of Studio Palestine, a critical study in international affairs with the Empire of the United Kingdom must be made. In 1948, a British mandate was implemented in the form of a letter that was written almost 30 years prior by British Secretary Arthur Balfour, presented to Lord Walter Rothschild, a member of a capitalist British dynasty who developed a draft to declare the new homeland for a Jewish population to be settled within Palestine, home to an already existing and intricate society. As a result, Hundreds of thousands of Palestinian families were forced out of their homes and exiled into camps, transmuting into refugees virtually overnight. I was always asking me, Father, Father, stop this war, stop these bombs, as if I can stop this war. This is the, this is his own feelings, but you can't imagine the feeling of a father when he finds his children afraid of war. Though this was just the earliest event that led to a decades-long conflict, the pillow shot of the violent tragedy of 1948 came to be collectively known as the Nakba, which translates to catastrophe in Arabic. There is no written record of the violence that ensued during the process of exile during Nakba. However, many Palestinian farmers orally testified to the horrific coercion that ensued. Additionally, very few films were produced during this time, and the collective mobility of Palestinians began to decelerate, suffering post-traumatic stress and other disorders as a result. During this time, which spanned between 1948 and 1967, the second period of Palestinian cinema came to be known as the Epoch of Silence, attesting to the impediment of collective Palestinian filmmaking. Palestinians soon found that the British colonial empire was not their only enemy, but the Israeli forces that sought to gain full control of extensive lands and sea, particularly access to the Straits of Tyran, which are the narrow sea passages between the Sinai and Arabic Peninsula, and vital for the mobility of Israeli oil cargo ships. In 1967, Egypt declared the closure of the Straits in support of their boycott against Israeli development of military and warfare advancements, triggering the Six-Day War. After the war, Israel gained control of the Sinai Peninsula, the West Bank, East Jerusalem, and the Gaza Strip. This event was collectively known to the Palestinians as the Naksa. 
This sparked the third period in Palestinian cinema, which was strengthened by exiled and dispersed filmmakers who sought resistance and complete autonomy. In part two of episode 10, we'll look into the radical organizations that contributed to the third period of Palestinian cinema, as well as the role of revolutionary women filmmakers. Follow us on Patreon for access to written and research materials and video excerpts.